Public session. Um, apologies have been received from um, Deputy Fergus O'Dowd and Senator John O'Mahony. And uh, before I, I, we begin, can I remind members to turn off the mobile phones completely as they interfere with the recording equipment? Um, is there, can I ask the members, is there any um, matters you wish to discuss in private session? Right. Okay. So, as I said, again, good afternoon, and we continue. Uh, before we begin, can I remind members and, and, and people in the public gallery to turn off their mobile phones completely? And before we commence the, the, the business of today's, I wish to turn to some housekeeping matters. Um, minutes of the meeting, 19th of June 2019, have been circulated. Are there any matters arising? Minutes agreed? Thank you. Okay, the correspondence. Email received from Colin McGinty regarding the report on the Governance Review Group established by Sport Ireland and the FAI to develop reform proposals for the FAI. Copy of the report on the Governance Review Group has been circulated. Um, it is proposed to note the uh, correspondence and um, schedule, to schedule this, a meeting of this in the coming weeks. Are you agreed? We, we had a discussion about this last week. Are we meeting Sport, Sport Ireland? Ireland? Okay, that's fine. Right. Um, Past bands was here from Michael Sheary, Company Secretary, Dublin Port, 24th of June. Uh, I reply in, in, inviting the CEO of Dublin Port to appear before the Joint Committee and further emails between Mr. Sheary and the clerk of the, to the committee seeking further clarity and to propose Mazar review. A uh, reply from Mr. Michael Sheary, Company Secretary, Dublin Port, declined the invitation to appear before the Joint Committee, explaining reasons for the declined the invitation and suggestions that members of the Joint Committee pay a visit to Dublin Port to discuss relevant issues. Um, comments? Yeah. Um, so they have, they're not coming in front of us. We're going, to, we're going to meet them, is that what it is? We're going to Dublin Port. Until after the review. Okay, and when is that review? Like six to eight weeks, okay. What's kind of disappointing, I've got to say, about the review is that, for me, it, 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 the focus of attention appears to be on where the leak came from rather than, uh, rather than the substance of the issue, uh, which is what we want to talk to them about, or part of what we want to talk to them about. Uh, so what exactly is being reviewed? Is it, uh, is it, you know, is it the... Is it the substance of the issue around the credit card and use of it, or, or is it associated with who's, who, who was responsible for the leak? Um, I think the other references were circulated yesterday. Do we... Yes, members received a, a copy of it uh, yesterday in, in their emails. Um, a forensic analysis of the expenditure undertaken on company credit cards from 2017, 2018, yeah. and year to date. You get your email. I suppose point to note, it's so disappointing that um, we as a committee were invited to Dublin Port, and I think we had to decline it because we had very few people interested in going there two weeks ago. Uh, I was looking forward to going myself, but uh, we must note again that the Dublin Port did invite this committee to, to visit on site. And we, it was cancelled because of not enough people turned me up. Um, listen, we'll move on. Correspondence from the Office of Deputy Breed Smith concerning statements made at a recent hearing of the Employment and Social Protection Committee. Um, it, it is proposed to schedule a meeting on this into a work schedule going forward in, in the autumn. Agreed? Agreed? Email received from Rory O'Donnell, Director of NISC, dated 24th of June 2019, referring to areas of work which may be of interest to the Joint Committee. Uh, this was circulated to us, our members, yesterday, and it's proposed to know this, this correspondence. Is that agreed? Yeah. Correspondence on the 24th of June from Mr. Michael O'Connor, Department of Transport, Tourism and, and Sport. We get on the availability of this side of the summer break for pre legislative scrutiny and general scheme of the Air Navigation Transport Bill. It is proposed to schedule this 
you know, our, our, our um, schedule going forward again in the autumn. Is that agreed? Thank you very much. It might be clarified by the department uh, it was something I was contacted about. I mean, the, Euro the European Union, in terms of um, air navigation, there's a fifth freedom, and that allows people from our airline operators from outside of the EU to. There's an origin and destination issue, which is an obvious, uh, an obvious freedom. But, but there appears to be one route that we have given permission for, and that is Dublin Madrid, and it's operated by Ethiopian, Air Ethiopian Airlines. Can I ask that we write the? I'll give the clerk the details that we that we write to uh, the, the Department of Transport and find out why is that an exception. Agreed. Okay. Accepted. Okay. Okay. Um, Accessibility of public transport for people with disabilities, and we we'll continue on. Um, I would like to welcome um, Minister for Transport, Tourism and Sport, uh, Deputy Shane Ross, and his, his officials, um, Alicia Connor and Demo Murphy. And you are very welcome. I suppose before we, we commence any cards or procedure, I am required to read the following. By virtue of Section 721, of the Defamation Act 2009, witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of the evidence you are to give to the committee. However, if you are directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter and you continue to do so, you are entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You are directed that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given and you are asked to respect the parliamentary practice to that effect where possible. You should not criticise nor make charge against any person or entity by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. Members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the, to the effect that members should not comment and criticise or make charge against either a person outside the House or an official, either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. Right. Minister, in November 2018, just gone, you, you, you launched a, a key report, Accessibility of Public Transport for People with Disabilities. Uh, this committee invested a large amount of work through our chairman and Deputy Fergus O'Dowd uh, in producing this report. We held, we held hearings with a broad range of stakeholders, including representatives from a number of disability organisations, disability advocates, the National Disability Authority, various transport operators, the National Transport Authority, and indeed just the Minister also gave evidence to the committee. In our report, the Joint Committee made 16 key policy recommendations, and we requested that you, Minister, update the Committee as to the implementation status of each of these recommendations within six months, and every six months thereafter. Today, Minister, we look forward to hearing from you the first update on progress made by you and your department towards the full implementation of those recommendations. I therefore now invite Minister Ross to make his opening statement. Minister. Mm. Thank you, Chairman. And thank you to the committee for the invitation to report on the implementation of the recommendation in its report on accessibility of public transport for people with disabilities. It's very important to me that this report, informed in particular by the experiences shared by those with lived experience of disability, is not left to gather dust. The spotlight given to and the momentum created by the committee's hearings and launch of the report in November last to address the gaps that continue to exist in public transport for people with disabilities must not, must, must not, not be lost, but rather must be built on. I'm pleased to be able to take the occasion today to tell the committee about a very important new project. Funding is being provided by the National Transport Authority for the development by the NCBI, that's the National Council for the Blind of Ireland, of a National Transport Training Centre which will provide training and familiarisation across all public transport modes. This will be a state-of-the-art indoor accessible transport training centre which will empower people with access needs when preparing for and during their journey using public transport. The NCBI developed the proposals for the construction of the NTTC which will, which will be the world's largest and most extensive training centres, supporting not only individual and group training opportunities, but additionally supporting user and design testing, increasing public awareness Sorry. 
and informing standardisation and consistency in public transport accessibility. The primary goal of the NTTC is to provide short-term comprehensive instruction designed to teach people with disabilities how to travel safely and independently using public transportation. Full-size replicas of bus, train and tram vehicles will be used to familiarise users with how to safely and confidently use these modes on a day-to-day -day basis. Examples of road junction crossings and on-street pedestrian facilities will also be available. Training will also extend to transport agency staff and other key stakeholders. NCBI expect to be in a position to announce the location of this exciting new training facility by the end of July, and it is also expected that the development work on the centre will be completed during next year. That's the National training, uh, Transport Training Centre. As you know, the Committee's report recommendations cover a wide range of measures aimed at improving access to public transport by people with disabilities, and there are many actors in the, in the public transport sector who have a role to play in delivering on that. I want to ensure that this first six-month update to you covers not just those recommendations which come within my remit as Minister with responsibility for policy and overall funding for public transport, but also those for which the public transport companies under the aegis of my department have the lead role in addressing. My department received updates from the National Transport Authority, Bus Aaron, Dublin Bus, Irish Rail and TII in relation to their consideration of the recommendations appropriate to them and the steps being taken to address them. Of the 16 main recommendations in the report, 13 in whole or in part come within the remit of my department, the NTA and all the transport operators. Work is underway in relation to these recommendations, including new infrastructure which is being built to accessibility standards as part of the normal design and this includes key major public transport projects under the National Development Plan. For example, the specification being developed for the new DART fleet under the NDP will include accessibility requirements as a key element and the intention is that the tender scoring will award higher scores to carriage providers who provide the best platform interface solution. <clears throat> there is increased funding for the retrofit program to address infrastructural le legacy issues with the trebling of funding to 2021. In rural and regional areas, the NTA aims to deliver 20 new wheelchair lift accessible bus stops this year. The NTA is introducing new floor coaches on regional commuter routes that will facilitate access onto these services without pre-booking. Over 900 grants applications have been received in the first five months of 2019 under the grant scheme to increase the number of wheelchair accessible vehicles in the taxi fleet, and over 90% of those applications have received provisional grant offers from the NTA. The NTA is developing a centralised customer contact centre which will address issues covered by recommendations 4 and 7 of the committee's report. The NTA has set up a working group to plan for the implementation of the JAM card scheme. The NTA will be publishing draft proposals for public consultation in respect of the accessibility requirements for licensed bus and coach services in Q3 of this year. <clears throat> As you know, my role relates to policy and overall funding in relation to public transport. The Committee in Recommendations 1 and 2 of its report calls on the Government to adequately fund and provide a clear policy plan to move towards full accessibility on all public transport and to ensure the requirements of people with disabilities are a core feature of all public transport planning, funding and development. I would like to set out the policy framework in place for accessible public transport and the funding underpinning that policy. The Government ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in March of last year. It includes social and economic rights in areas such as education, healthcare, employment and transport. States which ratify the UN Convention commit themselves to delivering civil and political rights to people with disabilities and to progressive realisation of social and economic rights, including in the area of transport. This is the approach adopted in Ireland in relation to public transport. Sitting beneath the UNCRPD 
are a range of whole of government national strategies and programs to advance the implementation of the Convention's provisions. From a public transport ac accessibility perspective, the two key strategies are the National Disability Inclusion Strategy 2017 to 21 and the Comprehensive Employment Strategy for People with Disabilities 2015 to 2024. The National Disability Inclusion Strategy sets the overall framework for the equal participation of people with disabilities in society and is therefore the primary instru instrument to achieve the progressive realization of the aims of the UNCRPD. The NDIS contains six actions aimed at improving access to public transport for people with disabilities. The NDIS is a living document and the process to begin a mid-term review a view of it will be the primary focus of the NDIS steering group meeting tomorrow. My colleague, Minister of State for Disability Issues, Finney McGrath, who chairs the NDIS steering group, has rightly said that it is vitally important that the review examines how the NDIS aligns with the articles of the UNCRPD. My department will be actively engaging with the mid-term review process. <clears throat> the Comprehensive Employment Strategy sets out a 10-year approach to ensuring that people with disabilities who are able to and want to work are supported and enabled to do so. The strategy covers a range of employment drivers, including transport, and the current action plan under the strategy contains 13 public transport specific actions, implementation for which the NTA has the lead role. A new CES action plan to cover the period 2019 to 2021 is currently being finalised by the CES implementation group, of which my department is a member, and is due for publication by the Department of Justice and Equality shortly. The new action plan will again provide for a significant number of public transport actions. The Department of Transport, Tourism and Sports high-level policy goal for accessible public transport is embodied in the concept of transport access for all. This policy is based on the provisions of the UN CRPD, the Disability Act 2005 and the national strategies I've already mentioned. Transport Access for All is the title of the, D of the DTAS, the Department of Transport Sectoral Plan, under the Disability Act, and is premised on the principle of universal access to public transport, which does not distinguish between people with disabilities <coughs> and other passengers. It promotes the concept of mainstreaming and states that accessibility must be an integral part of all policy make making and transport planning and of the provision of transport services so that wherever possible the needs of people with disabilities are met within mainstream services and facilities. The cascading policy framework I've outlined provides the basis on which we move towards full accessibility on all public transport as soon as practically possible. Implementation of actions emanating from this policy framework is monitored by my department's accessibility consultative committee which meets quarterly. Updates on the actions are published on my department's website. In line with the commitment in the programme for a partnership government to a review of public transport policy, I'll be announcing sh shortly the commencement of a public consultation process as part of the review. The purpose of the public consultation will be gi to give stakeholders the opportunity to feed into the department's policy review so that all contributions are fully considered in shaping the development of a public transport policy statement. I urge the committee and all those who have an interest in how our public transport is delivered to make submissions when the public consultation opens. In light of what we are discussing here today, I would especially like to hear from those in the disability community in relation to policy around accessible public transport and what they see as being the priorities to improve public transport accessibility for people with disabilities, as well as any international best practice examples that could be applied in an Irish context. Investment in public transport will be accelerated under the National Development Plan to support the development of an integrated, accessible and sustainable national public transport system. 8.6 billion of capital investment has been committed up to 2027 for key public transport projects. A number of new major public transport programmes are planned under the NDP, including bus connects for island cities, Metrolink, priority elements of the DART expansion programme, and sustainable transport projects, including cycling and walking. I want to emphasise that in line with the recommendations in the committee's report, as with all new and recently developed public transport projects, these programmes will be fully accessible as part of the normal design. 
However, the progressive realization of the rights of people with disabilities under the UNCRPD requires us to continue to address our legacy public transport infrastructure. There are real challenges to doing this. The Committee's report acknowledges that achieving a fully accessible public transport system will require resources, including time and monetary investment. It was in recognition of the need for an increase in funding to address legacy infrastructure that I sought and happily secured a trebling of the funding provided by the Accessibility Retrofit Programme as part of the four-year capital envelope for public transport announced in Budget 2018. An amount of almost $28 million is being made available through the NTA for accessibility upgrades for existing oldest infrastructure in the four-year period to 2021. Funding under the programme in 2019 is $7 million, up from $4 million last year, and this level of investment will be maintained in 2020. 2021 will see an increase to almost $10 million. I would add that there will also be a continued investment programme under the NDP to fund retrofitting of old existing public transport facilities to enhance accessibility. While funding is central to providing accessible public transport infrastructure, to achieve full accessibility on all public transport requires a whole-of-journey approach and the active engagement of all the key stakeholders. The Committee in its report recognises the importance of the whole-of-journey approach and makes recommendations in this regard. It involves not only the physical infrastructure, but also measures such as ticketing and information systems, travel assistance schemes, disability awareness training for staff, contact and complaints handling systems. Crucially, it requires the early and ongoing involvement of people with lived experience of disabilities and their representative organisations in the planning and design of public transport infrastructure and services. In my role as Minister, I decided that no public transport company in my department would in future function without a minimum of one board member with personal knowledge and experience of the needs and difficulties of people with disabilities using public transport. As you are aware, I have appointed such directors to the boards of CIE, Bus Air, Irish Rail, Irish Rail, Dublin Bus and the NTA. I believe that these new directors can and are playing a vital role in assisting the public transport companies to make practical and informed decisions on how best to make their infrastructure and services more accessible for people with disabilities. The individual transport operators, both public and private, the NTA and local authorities, given their respective roles and responsibilities, must each play their part in delivering an accessible public transport system. This requires coordination and a joined-up approach. The NTA, with its functional responsibility for, for promoting the development of an integrated, accessible public transport network, has a key role to play. A critical development in this regard is the new position of Transport Accessibility Manager in the NTA. This will be a key position as the various public transport projects under the NTP are rolled out and ensuring that accessibility is, is built into all new services and facilities from the design stage. The role and responsibilities of the post include establishing a formal engagement process with key disability representative organisations to ensure that the needs of those with a disability are considered in all major improvement plans, coordinating the accessibility programmes of transport operators, reviewing and auditing accessibility plans of transport operators, advising on the development of transport operator training programmes and coordinating the access officers across all public transport operators. I'm pleased to be able to announce that this is not just an aspiration, but that the successful applicant for the position of Transport Accessibility Manager took up duty in the NTA on Monday of this week. I've sought to take actions that will have a meaningful effect on the lives of people with disabilities, including increasing funding for accessibility programmes, giving a voice at the highest level of decision-making to those with lived experience of disability, and ensuring that my department has an active accessibility consultative committee to ensure that accessibility actions are monitored and advanced. There are some very positive things happening, but I'm fully aware that much more still needs to be done, and always will. My department will be working very closely with the NTA's newly appointed transport accessibility manager to progress the accessibility agenda. 
including the recommendations of the committee's report. I look forward to reporting on further developments at future six monthly updates to the committee on its report. Thank you. Minister, yes, I thank you for the deliberation and um, I suppose that this will be the fruits of the underground. We can see the progress that's been made. Um, just one, one major question for you, Minister, before I throw it to the floor. Um, given the last week or week and a half, you know, we, we've had your cabinet meeting on climate action, climate change, and the fast track, obviously, public transport net. Do you think um, this program can be incorporated to keep pace, you know, with, with the demands in regards to the accessibility of public transport? That will you, your department still have the money to, to play a part in ensuring? People with disabilities have proper access and use of public transports. And um, to answer your question, Chairman, thank you for it. I have absolutely no reason for, to believe that any of the programmes, the aspirations, or the actions which I've outlined there will be in any way delayed. And I've had no indications from anywhere else that they will be delayed either. I think they're too important to, to do so. A lot of it isn't actually to do with money. A lot of it's to do with changing public attitudes, a lot of it's to do with uh, other, other things which are not necessarily costly but incredibly important and I don't think uh, there will be any pressure to reduce uh, the programme which I've outlined there uh, for, to increase accessibility and I would resist it. Okay, first um, person, uh, the speaker, Senator Frank Feehan. Uh, uh, thank you, Minister, and when we were doing uh, this report on accessibility for public transport for people with disabilities. It was really an eye-opener for, for us, certainly on the committee, and I just want to thank the stakeholders um, who engaged with the committee. And in the witnesses appeared uh, before the committee, they clearly and starkly articulated their experience of disadvantage and exclusion and unequal treatment. And it was just something that I only noticed myself in the last few years when you have, a, 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 and it's a much different, but you have a young child sometimes with a pram, I know it's a different, but it's only then when it kind of realised that somebody who wouldn't be as familiar um, how difficult it is for people with, dis uh, with disabilities to access public transport, and it's just, just a, an aside, effectively. Um, the public, tr uh, the committee and all those, uh, 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 you're asking people to make submissions for the public consultation is open. I do welcome the investment of public transport will be accelerated under the National Development Plan. Uh, that is certainly welcome. Uh, also, um, I do welcome the fact that you've said that no public transport company in your par department would in future function without a minimum of one board member. And I'm delighted that you have appointed such directors, two boards of CIE, Bus Airden, Irish Rail and Dublin Bus and the NTA, because I believe these directors, directors can play a vital role in, in how best to deal uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the infrastructure uh, uh, accessible for people with disabilities. Um, you also said that you're pleased to announce that the successful applicant for the position of Transport Accessibility Manager took up duty in the NTA on Monday of this week. What I'd like to know, what exactly is that role? Um, what powers uh, does that manager have? And um, how will he or she make, make a difference? And finally, um, you know, I do welcome the fact that in rural and regional areas, the NTA aims to deliver 20 new wheelchair lift accessible bus stops this year. Where are those bus stops going to be? And finally, um, the NTA is developing a centralised customer contact centre, which will address the issue covered by recommendations four to seven of the committee's report. What exactly will that contact, uh, contact uh, centralised customer contact centre do? I understand it's from door to door, but um, again, what powers will they have? Um, what's the chain of command effectively to deal with the issues, these very, very important issues? Uh, thank you, Minister. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd like to thank Senator Fian for those for his remarks. And I without appearing to flatter him too much or, 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 or any of the other members of the committee, I think the role played by this committee is really helpful in increasing public awareness and making others accountable, like including myself, for 
for what's happening here. And they, they are responsible. All, you're all responsible for the fact that there has been a, a giant step forward, not just in funding, but in public awareness and in the need for uh, to, to disability proof uh, public transport decisions in all, the, in all their aspects. And you, you refer to the, uh, the board members who, who I pointed. Um, I think that is proving to be successful. I see a greater awareness uh, amongst the operating companies uh, of all the difficulties of people with disabilities having travelling. And it, it does, of course, put pressure on the board members themselves to, uh, to ensure that uh, this is done uh, at every occasion. And I, I think they're responding well to it. And the, the action we've seen is that they're responding well to it. On the transport accessibility manager, yeah, that's a new appointment started on Monday, as you know, and that's uh, a really appointed, important appointment. And I think it's, it's not just important for what they do, but it's important because it's a recognition of the importance that this is now, this issue is now taking in the kind of firmament of tra transport and how everything will have to pass the, uh, pass muster really with the, uh, Transport Accessible Manager. I can give you, I can give you a, a fair old uh, summary of what, of what he or she can do. It, to establish a formal engagement process with key disability representative groups. To ensure that the needs of those with a disability are considered in all the major improvement plans proposed by the NTA. That's a pretty wide brief. It means that, it, it, to me that means that it's to, uh, that it's, it's their job to, to disability proof all, all major decisions and improvement plans. Uh, to develop an improvement plan for existing services in consultation with key disability representative groups and identify priorities within that plan. To assist in the development of the authority's accessibility capital program and ensure that accessibility is to the forefront of all new transport infrastructure. To monitor the delivery of improvements in the accessibility of public transport services and infrastructure to act as an internal spokesman within the NTA for the customer who has a disability, to monitor progress on actions under the department's sectoral plan, transport access for all, the comprehensive employment strategy and the national disability inclusion strategy, which I said in my opening speech, these are the kind of the key strategies, so progress on those actions and the department's progress on that has to be reported on uh, by the transport accessibility manager to coordinate the accessibility programs that are underway by transport operators for improving accessibility to public transport, to review and audit accessibility plans of transport operators contracted by the authority, so they'll be looking after the interests of the authority and following through on, on, on various issues which have, accessibility issues which have been contracted by the NTA, to assist in the development of the appropriate policy and strategy to improve the accessibility features provided by licensed public bus transport operators, to facilitate the early involvement of relevant stakeholders in the next generation ticketing program, to advise on the development of transport operator training programs, to draft and update accessibility policies for public transport customers, to ensure a high standard of universal access training is provided to the authorities' employees, to undertake research in the area of public transport accessibility, particularly in the tools that are being developed to improve accessibility, to coordinate the, the access officers across all public transport service op operators, to establish a contact system and complaints handling system for users of the public transport who have a disability. In other words, this, it, the, the, the new transport ac accessibility manager will have a role in relaying the complaints and receiving the complaints of all those who feel that they have been badly treated or are being omitted or whose cases are not being heard or whose, whose difficulties are not being acknowledged. Uh, to establish a contact complaint system, to ensure that the authority's Transport for Ireland website conforms with the official accessibility guidelines and that any official published information supplied by the authority is available in accessible formats and to promote the improvements in accessible services to customers and key stakeholders. Those are the kind of duties and responsibilities that are spelled out uh, to the Transport Accessibility Manager. But it's, it's kind of more than that. It's, a, it's, it's also a, a great link and a great recognition of the importance of this issue to public transport and it means that the NTA is, I think it should be acknowledged, has seriously bought in to the need for a position of this sort and for the need to progress it fast and accelerate it. Um, 
You asked me about the bus, bus stops. Yeah, uh, I think I have the details here. I haven't got them off by heart, I'm afraid. But uh, yes, here we are. The NTA has set a target of 86 wheelchair accessible bus stops in 43 towns, each with a population of over 5,000, one stop in each direction. That's 50% of main towns with a wheelchair accessible bus stop, one in each direction, by the end of 2021. NTA are liaising with a number of local authorities nationwide, including Sligo, Clare, Cork, Wexford, Cavan, Limerick, Offaly and Meath, to develop designs and agree accessible bus stop locations and scope of works. Surveys and designs are being developed for wheelchair accessible stops at Ballyshannon and Sligo bus stations, which would be of interest to you. I think. Uh, there are some logistical issues which impact the upgrading of bus stops in regional lo rural locations. Uh, yeah, in particular, most rural bus stops and most towns do not have the footpath worth of three metres, and that's where, one of the difficulties that we've, in, we, we've encountered nationwide, but we're trying to overcome. Um, and the last thing, yeah, the central customer uh, centre. This is a kind of centralised customer centre which is meant to make it more in, in efficient and in, integrated uh, contact really with the with the custom with the with the customer or the public <coughs> it will provide information on a more integrated basis than is possible at present it will utilize the various available communications channels and it, that'll include the phone email live chat and social media as part of the program to enhance information availability the nta will produce transport in information in a variety of formats. I think it's, it's really customer, it's cu customer driven uh, and they're currently developing a proposal, this proposal, which will enable the provision of information. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Deputy Captain Murphy. Thank you. Um, and thanks for the update, Minister. Um, I think that, you know, it, even if you look back 20 years ago, um, um, we can see that progress has been made, but you're right. There's, there's, it's, it, it really, there's an awful lot to be done, and what we can't do is, um, you know, end up with going backwards, if you like. Not, you know, when, when say, uh, new, new, a new fleet is, is, is being purchased, that it has to be to the optimum. So it's welcome that, um, that the, the specification is being developed for the Dart fleet. My understanding was that that fleet was already on order. There was a big announcement of an order, and I would have thought that the specification would have been done in advance of that order, because uh, experience with the National Children's Hospital, for example, tells us that you really have to nail down the details or you end up with add-ons and things like that, and I'm sure it's exactly the same here. Um, can I just ask, when, when, is that, when, when is that fleet due to be delivered i'm sure it'll it'll be it'll, it'll arrive in uh, on an incremental basis rather than rather than all at the one time because there's a degree of commissioning that's needed with uh, with sorry, trains sorry the the dart fleet the dart fleet yeah, yeah. okay um, yeah. so you're, you're saying there's the best platform interface solution um i've got to say i i read that and i read it twice and i read it and i said what exactly does that mean you might decipher that uh, so as we, we know exactly what it, what it was being talked about. So are those, are, is that fleet already on order? Was the specification done in advance of uh, the order going in? Um, was it provided for with, within that or how, how is that working? And exactly what, what are we talking about in relation to what will we physically see that will be different or that will be better or, or that will be that will provide for people with disabilities and we i mean it's appreciated that there's there's ranges of different disabilities including people who are visual uh, in, then there's people in wheelchairs and the home, so on and so forth um that's one question the second thing is the uh, the, the the bus stops which you've given us a, a rundown on um i'm i'm presuming that local authorities will be aware of of the desire to provide you know, um, as wide as possible, an access, and where there are new footpaths being uh, provided, that bus stops are thought about at that time, because often 
and I've certainly been there in the local authority where, you know, the, 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 the location of the bus stop was kind of an afterthought, if you like. Um, so I'm presuming there's some, there's some guidance to, to local authorities that, that doesn't mean that we'll be coming back and doing some of this work in future, but that where the width of the footpath could accommodate it, the, you know, the pull-in bay uh, may not be in an optimum location or whatever, but that, that there is kind of advanced consideration. Is that something that your department does? Does the NTA do it? Or who would have the responsibility for, for the guidance to the local authorities in relation to that? Um, the, um, the, the, in relation to the wheelchair accessible vehicles, and I have spoken to you about this before, um, because I had a look at the um, at, at, at where the um, vehicles are, and there were counties where there wasn't even one wheelchair accessible vehicle. Um, there was they, they, there might have been a lot in Dublin, and very little in somewhere like Tipperary. Um, I know it's down to individuals who make an application, but at the time I asked about um, whether or not it could be influenced that areas that were underprovided for would be positively discriminated in favour of, if you like, if there was an inadequate amount of money. But can you maybe just maybe just address that particular that particular issue? Um, I think it's really welcome that um, that the NTA have somebody with this expertise. Uh, an accessibility manager, because I think if, if you don't have somebody that is kind of embedded in an organisation, that is watching out, that is kind of the daily job that takes ownership of this, I don't, I don't think, I don't think um, it gets the kind of attention that it needs. And I think that's really welcome. I think it would be quite useful for the committee to invite that person in front of the committee maybe in six months' time to find out what the experience has been because I think we could get very good, um, very good um, kind of feedback from, from, uh, from that point of view. Um, the, one of the criticisms, and I think we hear, heard it here in the hearings, but I hear it kind of constantly, is that the more accessible you make your bus fleet, say, um, and for example Dublin bus with low floors and so on and so forth, for there has been serious improvements over the years. The problem is that then the internal space, when people know they can use it, I've, I've, I get repeated complaints with people who are told, well, that space has been used, so you'll have to wait for the next bus. So it's, it's um, you know, uh, the success invites people on, and at the same time, then uh, they may not be may not be provided for to the extent that you might that that might be needed, um, and it might be that there is a need to look at um, you know the the standards that are there at the moment, because uh, uh, because that is certainly presenting as a, a you know a an issue that comes up repeatedly enough to say that there is. Uh, that there's something, um, uh, you know, the success is 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 encouraging people, but then can they be accommodated? Um, I think that's. Uh, sorry, there's one other thing. The retrofit program. Um, I mean, and it's very welcome that the money has been a lot more money is going to be provided, and that's really good. Um, now, is there? A, a, can, can you give us, even if not today, can you give us an outline about how that has been gone about? What is the priority? How is it, how is it prioritised? Is it based on, on on usage? Is it based on on the, the particular type of, of vehicle, or, or or what way are you going about that? Or is it being gone about? It'd be quite useful to uh, to, to hear that, so as that we can get some understanding of what we uh, uh, what we might see in reality. It's Grant. Okay, uh, Minister, back to you again. Um, okay, let's just start off with. Uh, you asked about the tender process for the, uh, the DART fleet. The um, tender process has not yet commenced. Right. So uh, the specification actually is being developed at the moment. So it hasn't actually started, but I, I think it's going to, it's, 
It's in train. I don't know exactly Do what the date of start are, but I can find out if you want. If you could come back to us with yeah. that, that would be really useful. Yeah, fine. And the lead in for when, they, when we're going to see those trains actually on, on tracks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, certainly. The um, platform interface, by that, I, mean, I understand it it's the automatic ramp. In other words, to get so that, so that you have actual level, yeah. the same level. Okay. That's what that means. Right, okay. So the, uh, uh, yeah, the low level of wheelchair accessible vehicles in rural areas, that is something which the NTA is looking at, how this can be addressed, I think, pretty actively at the moment. It's not something, I think, which anything's been done about, but it's something which is under examination. And I, I'll certainly make sure that it, it's brought to their attention that you said that, because I think it's probably one of those... Those, uh, it's one of those issues which is, which is going to be addressed pretty urgently, but they haven't actually got down to it. I think it's one of the three that they haven't done. Um, the, on the bus stops, they're working with the local authorities. This is all N NTA business, but, uh, but, but the new, new manager I know already has, is taking a lead road, role on that. Um, the NTA funds them. The local authorities do the, um, do the planning and the construction of them. That's, that's, that's how that works. Um, no, what, what else do we have? Low level, which, yes. Uh, the retrofit program. Yeah, you're talking about, I think it's, it's divided into three. I think it's taxis, platforms, uh, railway stations, taxis, and um, bus stops. And that's, what, that's, that's been the case so far. Uh, I can get you the amounts. I haven't written down, down here, but it might take me a minute or two to find out which was spent uh, in the first year. But the, I think it went four, four million the first year, seven million the second year, seven million third, and ten million the fourth. I think that's what the plan is there. And it's to, so far it's been divided uh, between wheelchair taxis, bus stops, um, with towns of, with a population over five thousand, and railway stations based on the report carried out by Irish Red. Okay. Uh, yes, unplanned travel. Did you ask a question about that? Um, no, it was one of the issues that came up here repeatedly. Oh, yeah, it was about, about that being space for people when they, when they actually get in. Um, the problem is they're not getting on the, they're not getting on the transport if there's, say, say there, there is a space provided in a bus. Okay. And then um, somebody is waiting at the bus stop in a wheelchair, and if the space is already used, so they, they have may, to wait. They may not be allowed onto that bus. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fifty percent, I think, of the Dublin bus fleet now has space for both wheelchair and buggy. It's got one room, room for both, and this is due to increase um, the retrofit program to up to up to it update is there is a retrofit program to update this i think this is it's still a problem obviously uh i think you know whereas we've made improvements there we've got the buggy the buggy and the wheelchair space there are occasions i think it's come to my attention as well where they kind of don't get on uh and it's something we've got to, we've got to address i agree it's not it's not sorted it's not sorted yet um What's this way? Yeah, that's right. In 2018, funding was provided for 205 PSO buses for the Dublin region, 141 buses for Dublin bus, 64 buses for Go Ahead, and they've all got the spaces, the extra spaces. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to say here that everything is sorted. It's not. But I'm, what I'm saying is that it is being addressed, and it, it, there is progress being, real progress being made here. And but you're, you're quite right that there are problems still remaining. Okay. Can, can I just, I, I, I suggested that we invite the transport disability manager in front of us maybe in six months' time. Can we just take a note of that so that we can put it on, can, yeah. on, on an appropriate place in the work programme? Very good. Agreed. Um, are you finished, Deputy Murphy? Yes. Yep. Minister, are you? Sure. Okay. Can I now bring in Deputy Imelda Munster? Thanks, Kinger. Like, and apologies for being late. I got caught up in, in the, the doll. Just in relation to the retrofit programme, Minister, and the fact that the funding is to be trebled by 2021, 
when 2021 is, is welcome. But can you outline um, what it has delivered to date, for example, and um, what's expected to be delivered by 2021 also? Um, there was another uh, question I had. It was in relation to the one-stop shop, you know, a centralised customer um, contact centre. It was an issue that I had particular interest in, whereby, you know, people, if they had this one one-stop shop that they could report, you know, delays, um, lack of accessibility, um, any complaints, all of that sort of thing. Can you say um, that the NTA is develop developing it, developing it, and at what stage are they at? And if you could expand on that. Um, there was one other issue, and it was probably a massive one, um, especially uh, transpired is probably the most frustrating thing for transport users um, and the ones that appeared before the committee was the, the lack of um, the, ex the accessibility issues regarding having to phone ahead to give whether it was rail or coach the 24 hours notice or the 20, 48 hour notice um, at any time they, they intended to travel. Has there been any movement on that given that that was one of the key frustrations? For people, and what is that movement? At what stage are we at with that? Shanae here, look. Mr. Ross. Yeah, the um, what's been de delivered to date on the uh, retrofitting mm. increases. Um, I think I said maybe before you came in, the funding for the programme uh, will increase from four million this year to uh, four million in 2018 to seven million this year, seven million next year and 10 million in the year following that uh, that means the allocation between 2019 and 2021 trebled from 9 million to 27.8 million um, as i said to you the uh, that was used for that I, it has been used for uh, for taxis wheelchair accessible taxis uh, grants for um, for platform stations railway stations uh, and that is all. It's, um, it's been used, I think, fairly successfully. I'll get to the details of it somewhere. Yes, yes. Which, ones, which ones they are. I think I have them, actually. Do you have them? They, they are actually in, in my brief somewhere, so it's not too far. The actual details of which ones have been done, I haven't got here, but I, but I can get them. They're somewhere. If you can forward them on, that yeah. would be fine. Yeah. yeah. The retrofit programme, yeah. The NTA managers within the programme can get information from them. Um, yeah, taxes increased from the... Okay, I'll, talk, I'll, 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 I'll take you through this. Okay, the legacy infrastructure which we're talking about is that uh, many of the stations on the rail network date from the 19th century and were not accessible for people with disabilities. Under the Accessibility Retrofit Program, these stations are progressively being made accessible. And, I mean, you know that utterly and totally Victorian, some of them, and uh, they certainly need it's a fair amount of money being spent on them. That's where uh, I think the lion's share, the largest allocation is actually going to railway stations to make them more accessible. Um, I, my understanding is that the Irish rail, rail fleet is, is internally accessible. The main issue with accessibility for wheelchair users is that a ramp is required between the train and the platform. And in the retro in 2019, if I can give you some details about that, the uh, rail, I think, will be 3 million. The stops will be 1.5 million, and the wheelchair uh, accessible vehicles will be 2.2 and a half million. I can give you here, I've got the details here. Um, examples of the accessibility related works for this year lifts in Carlo any stations are proceeding with works anticipated to start in September and November 2019 respectively tenders for construction of footbridges and lifts at Castle Knock and Edgeworth Stand are in the design tenders phase and minor works will be completed at Coolmine Station on regional bus stations Bus Aaron is undertaking taking accessibility enhancement works at Cabin, Monaghan and Drogheda bus stations during 2020. Drogheda, Drogheda? Mm -hmm. that means something to you, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Bus station. Maybe that's where the question. Oh, Edith Wise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can I stop? Yeah. yeah. During 2019. You mustn't have seen that, Minister. You would have crossed it out, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Don't worry. Don't worry. Next time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, works are due to be completed by the end of June. Surveys and designs are being developed for wheelchair accessible stops at Ballashannon and Sligo bus station. Okay. Minister, um, I suppose before so, I call on to. There was just two other questions oh, sorry. for the answer. The one-stop shop, the custom, customer centralised um, contact centre was a big issue. And I'm just looking for progress on that. Where, what stage is that at? Where are we? Um, You'd said that the NTA were yeah. developing it, so... It's a, it's a proposal stage as far as I know, isn't it? Yeah. It's what, it's, sorry? It, it's at proposal stage still. It hasn't actually... Oh, okay. There's nothing built there yet. It's not a building anyway. No, sorry, no. It's, not, it's, it's like a centre, a customer not, centre. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a centre, it'll be nearly all kind of uh, it's still at stuff. proposal stage, is but it? But the new manager will, will address that. Okay. It's, I... not a, it's, not, it's at proposal stage. Right, but it's basically, okay. it's, not a, it's not, a, not a location, it's not a physical location. Could, yeah, but could we maybe try and push a bit of progress on that um, so that people have that? Yeah, we'll, we'll inform centre. the new manager yeah. tomorrow okay. <coughs> uh, and ask them to put your request on yeah. And the other thing then about uh, whether there was movement in relation to um, people having to call ahead the 24 hours, 48 hours, if they're going to use train or what movement has been there. Because that came out as, as I said, one of the key frustrations for people having to give prior notice of their, their wish to travel. And they felt they were being discriminated against. Yeah, I think it's not, sat it's not satisfactory yet. Uh, but I think it's, you know, it's, it has made a fair amount of improvement. Um, they are, the NTA is introduce, introducing um, new low-floor coaches on regional commuter bus routes beginning this year that will, that will facilitate wheelchair access onto these services without pre-brooking um, after sufficient fleet has been introduced into the service. I mean, there is progress being made on that. There are more than two or three ways of actually tackling that problem. Uh, and there will be also, uh, you know, in, uh, elsewhere, the advanced notice to reserve a wheelchair space is 20, 24 hours for all time. Uh, it used to be 48 hours. So that has been progress there. That's, uh, it's, it's a difficult problem, and they are addressing it in different ways. Okay, I wonder, and I understand you don't have the, the exact detail there, but I wonder could we be furnished with just a progress? update yeah, on those yeah. particular aspects of it. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you some details of some of the stations, but I don't th only think one of them was of any great interest to you. Well, they all would be overall. I'm not talking about local minister. I'm talking about just in general. As I, I know, said, it was one of the key you're a very broad-minded deputy. Of people, yes. Yeah. National yes. politician. Yes, that's yes. right, yeah. <laughs> Unlike yourself. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I was throwing plaudits at you. That's very ungracious. <laughs> right. Very good, yeah. Um, I suppose before I call our, our, our next speaker, um, Senator John Dolan, first of all, uh, John, on behalf of the committee and, and, and the staff, we want to thank you and, and uh, your assistant, um, Kieran Delaney, in facilitating us in, in having this report compiled and for the more invaluable um, uh, contributions you made and recommendations, and we thank you for, very much for that. So now I'll give the floor to you to speak to Mr. Ross. Uh, the I suppose. What I did was I gave Kieran the imprimatur, and he, he did a huge amount of, of work, and, and i very gracious of you to, to specifically mention him in relation to this. Uh, and of course, a lot of the people with disabilities and organisations came in behind it and put a lot of effort in. Um, I think just to get myself focused and get us focused, we must remember, and this doesn't take one iota from the progress that has been made and the accelerated progress that is being made and is due to be made. Public transport is a daily and regular grind and frustration for people with disabilities. That's what we're trying to, and you have, Minister, you've acknowledged that numerous times at this meeting, but it's important for us to, uh, we keep talking about progress, which is excellent. It doesn't take from the fact that people have real problems on a regular basis, and that's, um, I'm, I'm just noting that, and I, I'm delighted that we're at the stage that we are at, and this report is there. Um, let me go through a few things then. The, um, 
The Minister, in terms of, um, I think he mentioned 16 recommendations, 13 of them are his, and uh, that as a Minister he's taken, you're taking leadership in relation to making sure the other three things are, are kept moving. I think that's very important and it doesn't always uh, happen across departments and I acknowledge that. I think there's a complementary leadership role for this committee as well. We have our Blue Bible. Uh, and we have a way of monitoring it on a, on a, on a half-yearly basis. So I think between the two entities, the Minister Department and the Committee, uh, we can in parallel keep focus on this because it's human nature that as other issues come up, the ones that were there the week before slip back. And it's, I think it's really important that we don't let this slip, whatever else kind of challenges and, and issues come in relation to transport or government policies or one thing or another. Um, the, there's a lot of necessary processes now put in place. And like before you start building, you have to clean the site and you have to put out the foundations and um, someone will say, God, there's nothing happening. These are things that are happening. The pipe work is going in place. It's not sexy work but it's necessary work. Uh, we have to now, along with that, and that, that is really important, uh, gives us the foundations, um, to start ticking things off on a six monthly basis that we're actually keeping ourselves stretched to make, um, um, to make progress. The Minister, you said there won't be any pressure, any pressure to reduce funding. Uh, and if there is, I will resist it. I want to thank you for saying that, and I have no doubt that that would be your attitude uh, to it. Um, Senator Feehan talked about the whole process being an eye-opener uh, and listening to people with disabilities. And the point I want to make is that the more people with disabilities are seen out and about in ordinary places doing ordinary things, that moves the whole thing it, the whole objective for people with disabilities to actually have full lives. So that someone can be on a bus and go somewhere is more than just the journey. It's also a statement to the rest of the people on the bus and other people that Ireland has an intent to make sure people with disabilities can be out and about. So that's a, a, a very important cultural shift in, in this work. It's, it's more than just delivering seats or delivering whatever, but it's an important element of this, and I'm, I'm stressing it. Um, you, you said, Minister, that the NTA has seriously bought into this process. I think that was in relation to now having the accessibility manager post and whatever. I, I, I want to underline one possible risk, uh, which can be well avoided, that the accessibility manager becomes the person responsible in the NTA for what happens or doesn't happen. Um, that's a risk that can happen in an organisation. Oh, well, that's an accessibility. Go over and talk to whoever. Um, the responsibility I'm inviting you to, 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 to accept is with the board, the chair, and the chief executive. If they have a problem with the accessibility manager not doing the work, that's an issue they have to solve. It's not the accessibility, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, they, it's too, I've seen it over and over, well, we have someone dealing with access, and every, everyone else washes their hands of it. So this person has a critical role, but the buck stops with the people who run the NTA. Um, I, see, I, I still do have uh, confidence issues with the NTA, and I certainly hope there has been uh, a change. Um, We've seen the fiasco in, in relation to how Bus Connects dealt with or didn't deal with accessibility needs for people with disabilities. We had the go-ahead buses bought, paid, delivered, painted. And it was, I think, Elaine Howley at a, an NDIS meeting that said, can we have a look at these buses? It was the, the viewing was sorted out over a weekend but they were painted the wrong colour. Uh, all the money had been spent. And this is, this is what's happened in the last uh, year or two. And our first encounter here, Minister, was during the bus strike. 
and the reassurances that there was no diminution in services on, on the bus Airden routes where the bus Airden buses were being taken off. I'm not letting go of those recent things. I need to see, and disabled, never mind me, disabled people need to see the actual changes in how that organisation operates. It has had, through the, the, the 2009 Act, Regulations Act, it has had the capacity to put conditions on private operators going, going on to public service routes. It hasn't used it. It hasn't used it. Anyway, look, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's move on. Um, the, you talked there in your bullet points on page two, the, the, the increased funding for retrofitting pr um, program. I think what we want to see is what are the outcome, what are the expected outcomes for that and how is that working out? That's something we will want to see over the next six, twelve months or whatever. So what's your, um, what, what's your expectation for the funding that's going into that going to be in terms of outcomes? Um, the grant applications in relation to the, 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 the wheelchair accessible vehicles and the taxi fleet. Uh, I remember it's over 20 years ago when some of the taxi um, um, trade unions came, to, I was working in the wheelchair association at the time, came to us and said, would you not support our campaign to get VAT and VRT removed from taxis if we're making them accessible? And my reaction was, why would you buy a pup and then expect it to behave and to perform? Giving up front, disabled people, I have them coming into my office, I hear them in the organizations saying they're basically given the two fingers by taxis at certain times. Uh, accessible taxis, the taxi is empty, smart has to be put on that kind of behaviour. You guys have paid for it and they're giving the two fingers to members of the public who are in wheelchairs or whatever. So you give it up front and um, you have to make sure you get your value for your book. Um, the, and now with technology and all the rest of it, there has to be a way. There, there can never be a situation where there aren't a number of taxis available that are wheelchair accessible. Um, they, they, uh, they, they can have them coordinated. There's all sorts of ways uh, of, of, of um, doing it. The National Disability Inclusion Strategy was launched in July 2017 in Croke Park. And in fairness to you, Minister, you were one of the ministers that was actually at the launch. Um, I don't have great confidence in that strategy as having the horsepower, if you want to use that term, to actually uh, well progress the, the, um, the um, work to implement the disability, um, the, the convention and the disability strategy. Um, in fact, it's a strategy for four years, 17 to 20. It wasn't launched till July 17. There was a commitment to a mid-term review, and you're confirming to us information you've got from elsewhere, obviously, that the process to begin a mid-term review, this is halfway through the third of four years. This is written in the strategy in 2017. It wasn't a commitment that had 20 million euros attached to it. It was a commitment for a number of public servants in a number of departments led by justice to actually do a review by the middle of the four years, which was the end of last year. So I remain skeptical that there's enough oomph. I think if there was more oomph put into this, uh, it could work, but I don't, I don't see it uh, in, in, in my experience. Um, one thing that did happen... Could I ask maybe if the Minister could take that amount of questions? Oh, yeah, first? Grant. Yeah. yeah. That suits me as well. Missile? Yeah, fine. I, um, let me start trying to start at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with a lot, a lot of what Senator Dolan says, and it particularly telling when he said that transport's a daily grind for, for people with disabilities, and I think that's a very fair point, and it's something which we should bear in mind all the time, the obstacles which they 
have to put up with and the difficulties they have to put up with are difficult to relate and this, this we repeat them again and again and again and we, we absolutely ensure that those who are making decisions are aware of that and they, they are in whatever we achieve uh, in trying to make equal transport accessibility for everybody uh, there will always be difficulties for people in wheelchairs that they won't ever ever have the same you know, carefree attitude to travelling as maybe others who don't have a disabilities have, and I, I take his I take his point. Uh, and he then goes on to talk about the accountability of uh, many of the bodies here, and talks about the role of the committee in having a complementary role. I think it's I think it's fair to say that the committee has played a very important role. I think it's a a very good exercise in terms of parliamentary accountability and I think uh, Senator Dolan and, 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 and Deputy Murphy and others in this and, and you yourself Chair and, and Deputy O'Dowd and all others who are involved in, the, in this particular exercise should set this up as some sort of a template. This, this idea, I know it's, it's, it's difficult to fit in, but this idea that something as important as this should be reported on by a minister every six months is a very, very good, very good one. It's, uh, it, it means that things can't slip. It's good for the officials as well. It's good for the TDs. And it does, it does mean that uh, the gaps, of which, let's be honest, are still here and still here in, uh, in, in areas which would rather not be, uh, are exposed every, every six months until they're closed. And whereas, I, you know, I think we... This is a pretty good report that we have here and a, and a, a pretty big step change in mm. the attitude to disabilities. The fact of the matter is there are, there are things that have still to be done. And, we have, and we, here they are in front of us today. We can see them. Now, you know, the good things are, are fantastic and, and they're, they're tremendously important. I'm not claiming any credit for them. I think the committee, I think you, Senator Dolan, uh, and others should claim the credit. Kieran Delaney was referred to by you, Chairman. He's a phenomenal advocate uh, for disabilities, and he, he is relentless in his pursuit of them. But the idea that we should do this every six months is really, really useful. And uh, it's a kind of template, template for, for others. Uh, and it's a very useful parliamentary exercise. Um, yes, I see. You're right about the problem about the livery. Yeah, it was it was remedied, as far as I know, it's now remedied it completely, isn't it? It's uh, on, the, on the buses, but it's something which was spotted, and, it, and obviously it shouldn't have happened, and it does um, emphasise the fact that sometimes people aren't thinking in a sympathetic or as knowledgeable amount as, the, uh, as, they, uh, as they should be. I mean, I've just got a photograph of that. There's the buses now. Mm. That's the adjusted buses. But they were due to the fact that... Uh, that uh, the disability groups were loud and had voices to express the difficulties that, that were encountered by an oversight by the NTA. I must say, uh, uh, I understand that you're, you're not, you, you don't think the NTA bought into it. I, no, maybe they have. I just don't have, I, yeah. I still don't have confidence. That ice is too thin for me for a while. I yeah, hope I, I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I... I do think the evidence that we, we've seen of the progress being made, which is the actual implementation of these recommendations that were made by this committee, mm. is mainly up to the NTA. Okay. And on the whole, what I see here is, is, is real progress. And, and uh, Deputy Murphy was good enough to say that, you know, that things are, are, much, are better than they were uh, 20 years ago. And I think the NTA, and many of us, I think, probably were slow to realise the importance or to allocate the funding. I think that was true. I, when I see the, the acceleration that's going on now uh, in funding, what, what, what I'm surprised at and somewhat shocked at is as how small it was before. And that really was only something which I woke up to when I, when I became a minister, that how tiny it was. Uh, and I think that is due to lots of parties, lots of lobbying, due to yourself, Due to, due to the committee, due to um, the NTA, due to 
Deputy McGrath, due to a whole Minister McGrath, a whole load of people, but it is it is actually happening, and, uh, and I think that's you know that's, that can be nothing but good, and you know semi-state bodies are slow to slow to move, we we know that, but I I think what's happened here is that they they have moved to uh, a they have moved to a point where it probably couldn't be um, envisaged, you know, 15 or 20 or even 10, year, 10 years ago. Um, where are we now? The, sorry. Yeah, the retrofit programme we're talking about. The NTA will manage it and we'll get, I'll get details of the projects and the outcomes from the NTA. I mean, I think I've already said, okay, it's 28 million. We can give a breakdown of that. It's 447. I think 447, four, 7 and 10. And we know the three main places where it's gone, which is, which is uh, to, the, to the taxis, the grant, in grants to the taxis, uh, to the railway stations, um, and to the bus stops. And we know that's where, where the main bulk of that is, has been going. Um, what's that? Oh, on the NDIS, yeah. Um, yes. The, um, you're, you're, it's very interesting what you said about that. I wasn't aware about that. You're saying that... We're, we're three years into four years, and they're already starting the review. Mm. I'll take it up with them. I mean, it, it, that's it's actually indicative of yeah. That's that's the that Department brought, of Justice, and and that was brought specifically yeah. to their attention yeah. at the end of last year. Okay, so, um, I will I will take that up with the Department yeah. of Justice. See what happens. It is the Department of Justice that yeah, the equality side. Yeah, but uh, but I will take it up with them and ask them what the situation is. If if it's behind, it's it's. It's not well, right. It is behind. Yeah. Well, then it's not right. It shouldn't yeah. be behind. And yeah. uh, it, it will, we'll find out the reason why it is, uh, certainly. I'm just making, sorry, begging the point, Minister, that that, that that is indicative of maybe the amount of effort or resource or yeah. orientation that's gone into it. It wasn't a budget issue. It wasn't a money issue. It was about somebody saying, right, lads, we have a commitment here by the end of 2018 to, to pretty much have this done. Nobody obviously said that, or if they did, everybody else ignored them. So okay. That's really the, it just indicates. Okay, okay, you know, that's fine. It, it is where it is now, and it is being done, so, yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of, it's kind of a bit behind. The conditions of the private sector operators. Yeah, that is, that's, that's one of the big holes. It's, you know, it, the fact of the matter, they don't have to meet the same criteria. That is actually being acted upon now, and that's going out to a public consultation. The, uh, the NTA is, is looking at that with view to coming back with proposals. I think, personally, I think that's it's pretty unacceptable that the private sector should have to really operate under a regime which is... Or turn it the other way around. Pretty cavalier. Public sector. Sorry? Or put, put it the other way around. The public sector yeah. has to provide a higher level yeah. of, of accessibility. Sure, but they should both. Yeah. They should no, both. The, and the other one should come up to that standard. I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's yeah. my view. Yeah. I, I, I certainly hold that view. And, it, uh, you know, it's a fairly cavalier attitude to... Uh, I know the difficulties that, that exist, but uh, I don't think it's acceptable. But there is, there is movement. Um, the PSO buses, which are uh, serviced by the, by the private sector, are, are accessible, but the other ones are not. And what's happening now is there is movement on that, and the NTA is moving for a public uh, consultation on that uh, with a view to coming forward with proposals, which, makes, which certainly goes some way towards, towards remedying that problem, because it's not, it's not something which we can say we can happily live with. I, I agree with you about that. Uh, but there is movement. I mean, it's, it, it is being addressed, right? and uh, it may take some time. But I think there will be requirements on them to to improve the situation. Okay. 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 Th th thank you for hearing. Um, it just struck me when I was listening to the minister there that the, this report and this work actually helps this committee and the department to proof its disability inclusion work in relation to the Convention on the Rights of People, it pretty much does that. Mm. It, gives ye, it gives both of us a way to actually say this is what's been happening in relation to the commitment, uh, the transport article in the Convention. So it's, it's, it's a great device to have. Um, 
the in in another there's an Oireachtas disability group here uh, with with a number of the disability organisations and members of the Oireachtas, and we actually had a meeting with secretary all the secretary generals. Some of your colleagues were were were, were at that recently. That's another way to actually spread responsibility and work around various issues that fall uh, beyond just uh, one department. Um, the, the, the whole... Sorry. Yeah, you talked, um, just to say, and it's a compliment to the Minister, the um, putting folk with disabilities and lived experience on a number of boards um, that's an initiative in this department that could be very sweetly followed by a host of other departments and fair play for doing that. Um, and the, the other thing that those people on the boards do, they actually act as a conscience, a reminder to the board, why are these people here? Oh, because we're supposed to be providing a service for everybody. And so that's an important cultural kind of element to it. Um, the, a number of particular um, specific questions. Um, the, under the 16 points, and I won't go through them <laughs> all, um, I, it's my understanding that the, the NT, uh, this is planning and decision making, the, number two, the NTA are using a UN standard for accessibility for the acquisition of fleet which doesn't take into account powered wheelchairs. The, the kind of wheelchairs that are available now, powered ones versus push ones, um, are very different than the past and many people can only get to the bus now because they actually have a powered wheelchair so if the bus isn't able to accommodate it that may be an issue I think that uh, that needs um, the I understand there's a um, the an EN 17161 standard um, in relation to accessibility and powered wheelchairs and buses um, um, the priority seating I'm, I'm on uh, area three now the, in terms of rail um, I'm getting reports and information that able-bodied people are now reserving priority seating which was and is intended for people who have mobility impairments actually reserving them that seems a, a, bit, a bit odd um, so how is that happening so maybe that can be checked um, the, I'm glad to hear the progress in relation to the to the jam card um, um, in relation to orient, orientation and wayfinding and this is particularly for people with, with uh, visual impairments and whatever Irish Rail I understand have conducted a review of their signage and way guidance system that they fully engage with the disability community in relation but but that funding is a significant barrier to making progression of this on a, on a, on a national basis. So if, if the Minister could, could um, give a commitment or make a comment on um, how that can be um, sorted out, if there's funding needed for it, is it going to be made available? It's a, it's a very critical issue um, for people with visual impairments. Um, The travel costs, um, I think the NTA is still permitting the charging of five euro per journey for people with disabilities to reserve seats on intercity services and these are people who have um, free travel. Um, I'd be, the, 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 um, my understanding of it, it's in breach of an EU regulation which specifically states that people with disabilities should not pay a surcharge. Um, so that's something I think that needs um, to be looked at. I've mentioned already the accessible um, taxi issue. Um, and issue 15, and um, accountability. Has the NTA developed key performance indicators in relation to these, the headings contained in this report? Have they actually got their template set out how they're going to move on uh, and measure progress? I think that would be, if they have it, it would be really good to see it. If they haven't, I think 
uh, it's essential to keep, the, to keep this thing moving. So could you repeat that question? Let's have the NTA developed a set of key performance indicators mm -hmm. across the 16 recommendations in the report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to be coming back episodically and asking this and asking that, but um, it would be great if they had done that and to be a great reassurance to people. Um, I think that's plenty. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ross. Back to you. Yeah, I, I think if, if the Senator will allow it, all those questions just about are, are pretty detailed and I'll have to yeah, refer. But I will, I will get the answers to them. I don't, I don't know about the five euro charge. I'll, I'll check it up with our Irish Rail, Irish Rail. Um, and the priority seating issue. Yeah, how is that happening? Powered, powered wheelchairs. Mm, do I have an answer here for that? Oh, yeah. The NTA has said it's arranging the next few weeks an inspection of one of these single deck bus types with representatives from the IWA and with representatives of the bus manufacturer to examine whether there is any modification to any of the hand poles that would improve the maneuverability of a wheelchair into the designated wheelchair space. However, moving poles may not be possible due to the structural design of the bus, so the NTA is not in a position to promise that it will be possible to make changes, but, it, but it, it's going to examine whether it's possible. That's a reply which anticipated your question. Right? Uh, okay. And on the indicators, you're talking about the KPIs. Um, the, national, the NDA, the National Disability Authority, is developing high-level indicators to monitor the accessibility of public transport and whether public transport service providers are compliant with the NDA's code of practice on accessibility of public services and information provided by public bodies. My department, the NDA and public transport operators, have been engaging with the NDA on this work, including attending a workshop organized by them. So it is it's certainly on the agenda, but I think we we have to keep up with it. The other questions you asked, I think, had to be. I'll, I will refer back to you on each of them. I've got a note of them all. Right. But, we have, but, but I will. They're, they're, they're very detailed, and I don't want to yeah. mis mislead no, no, you. No, that's fine. Yeah. In any way. Um, and the Iraq's Disability Group, yeah, this is going to be, I think, um, an ongoing and a very useful group because it, it keeps awareness going and it's, it's, it's held at a very high level. I think. Uh, but it also gives, if I may, this, it also gives your department yeah. an opportunity to talk to its colleagues. Correct. And say, if we're doing this bit, boys, you need to be doing that bit in sync, and vice versa. That's, the, I think that can be a good. Um, yeah, it was the Secretary Generals of all government departments I yes. think attended, which is a very high level indeed, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and including the Secretary General of my department. Uh, so that that will continue, and we'll certainly encourage encourage that. Um, Thank you for your remarks about the boards. Yeah, I think they are a kind of a conscience and a, a reminder, but I think uh, it would be, I think it is working from what I've heard, and I think it would be very useful in many other departments if they follow this example. It's, uh, it's something which is, should have been done years ago, I think. Uh, uh, otherwise, I think that's probably all. Is that okay? That's fine. Chair, Chair could I make just a couple of brief points just yes. following up on that. The, um, the example I gave about go ahead and all that they've been bought and paid for it, everything and had to be retrofitted in the colour change. Mm. One of the issues that was pointed out in those, and I'm going from memory now, was the actual turning and manoeuvrability space in the buses. Mm. And I think some people were saying it wasn't quite as good as buses they replaced. So that's yeah. relevant in relation to the um, the motorised wheelchairs and whatever. Yeah. The KPIs, the ND, the National Disability Authority um, dealing with that, I presume then that it should automatically trickle down to the NTA that they would have their own spreadsheets and cap <coughs> performance indicators to be yeah. able to yeah, I think so. deal with them. Yeah. yeah, I think you can take that as given. <coughs> okay. And finally, the, I didn't say it at the start, they, they delighted to hear about the National Transport Training Centre and, the, and yeah. they, they work there with the National Council for the Blind. I think that should be a really positive development. Hopefully and, that's... And, and that's happened with yeah. the NTA. Yeah. That's funded by them, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, thanks, Senator. I suppose before I just conclude, uh, Minister, I suppose really thank you for um, the participation here this afternoon. And um, 
we look forward to it. Should we all be here again in six months for a progress report yeah. and the implementation of the accessibility of public transport for people with disabilities? I think Sir Dolan made a valid point there is that um, we could use the, 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 the 16 recommendations as a measure mm -hmm. as, we, as we progress, like, you know, the, each of those um, recommendations, how we can measure those going forward. Like, you know, but that Minister, I thank you all for coming here today, other department officials, and our next meeting is on the 10 a.m. on July the 3rd, 2019. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, just, 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 could I just say one thing? Um, I have an update here. It's a kind of rough, no, it's, it's, it's for my own use, um, on the recommendations which, which your committee made, uh, with the, the status of those recommendations and, and what, what's been achieved and what's done. I'd be happy to make that available to the committee and to John or to, to, to Senator Dolan. Really if you like. it, it, just, it just goes through it in a very thorough way, and I, I see no reason why you shouldn't have it as well. It, it, what the response would be, so I'll, I'll make that available. That's Welcome right. to Minister. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. It was in the clock, yes. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Good job.